This is the story of the flying fish. In a prosperous world of clouds and space, there once lived a gifted gardener rabbit and his three sons. The family of rabbits grew stars and all kinds of beautifully colored moons in their wondrous patch. They always had enough sun droplets to drink, and their comfy home was made of the strongest materials from the planets above. Though the family's needs were always met, nothing is perfect when it comes to the hearts of the living. You see, the two oldest brothers were much bigger than their younger brother and could jump much higher. They would sometimes tease him for his weaker legs, for in their world, a rabbit's status was determined by how high he could jump. Though their jokes were made in jest, the youngest brother would take them to heart and run away crying. Every time he did, his father would find him, dry his tears, and remind him, even the smallest bunny in the universe can make a large leap. As time passed, the three brothers grew older and the teasing eventually stopped, but the youngest brother never forgave. Even as fully grown rabbits, the youngest brother, still the smallest, would watch his larger brothers leap tall bounds with bitterness in his heart. He would look on with jealousy as they harvested the planets above his reach, and he craved nothing more than a chance to prove his superiority. Then one day, an opportunity presented itself. The gardener rabbit, now old, gave each of his three sons ten gold stars and equal bags of glittering seeds of every kind. Each of you spread out to the different worlds below and buy some land. Then take these seeds and grow them into the finest gardens you can. Once your garden flourishes, give the food to anyone in need. And the boys did as their father said, leaping down to the different worlds below. The youngest brother wasn't concerned with feeding the needy, but saw this as his chance to prove he was greater than his siblings and was determined to grow his father, the biggest and best garden the universe had ever seen. So he went on his way to a blue planet and was surprised to find a population of starving fish. Their world was an endless ocean, deeper in some parts than others. Though they had plenty of salt water to breathe, its dark blue hue made it hard for them to get much sun droplets, and they were very thirsty. The wealthier fish lived higher up, where the water wasn't deep enough to absorb the sun drops, but the poorer fish lived deep down and had difficulty finding enough to drink, let alone to grow crops, and so they were very hungry. With his ten gold stars, the young rabbit was able to purchase land close enough to the surface to get plenty of sun drops, and once he was settled in his new home, he began devising a plan. The young rabbit knew his grandiose goal would be a challenge and that he would require many supplies to get started, but he had nothing left to spend. I do not have what I need, he thought, but I bet the fish do. So he began preaching on the dark streets asking for supplies to help him with his garden. Your sacrifice is for the greater good, he called out to the passerbys. My garden will yield a crop for all of us very soon if we all pitch in, he promised. One by one, the emaciated fish handed over what they had in hopes of liberating their world from hunger. One by one, the young rabbit took the poor fish's goods with no intention of truly helping. Once young rabbit's garden grew to a large size, he realized he would need help tending it. Again, he took to the dreary streets to recruit some poor fish with the promise of payment once the garden started to bear fruit. Your sacrifice is for the greater good, he said. And they agreed. As expected, the garden flourished, but unbeknownst to the fish, the young rabbit was overtaken by greed. He started to sell the stars and moons to the wealthiest families in town at an undisclosed amount, and kept a large portion of the profit for himself, only giving his workers a small sum. He fed his workers just enough to keep them working and rarely fed the needy unless they could provide a service to him. The young rabbit also destroyed any competition he might have with the other local gardeners. He would do anything he could to guarantee their failure. He would poison their soil, steal their workers, and even buy up their land. As time passed, he grew wealthier and wealthier. His garden, now full and fruitful, had made him rich enough to afford the grandest home and the finest clothing. But the fish grew poorer still. Young Rabbit's garden was the only garden left in their world and was being mostly eaten up by the wealthiest of them. 
One by one, the starving fish grew wise to the wealthy young rabbit's unfairness and began to confront him with their suspicions. But where the youngest brother lacked size and strength, he made up for in cleverness and deceit. The young rabbit always had an excuse to offer his adversaries and would sometimes even shame them for questioning him. Those who held their ground when opposing him were fired from tending his garden and would eventually starve to death. Years passed, each worse than the last. The now not so young rabbit was disgustingly wealthy and very large from eating so much star fruit. Then one day he received a letter from his father. It was time to show off what he had built to his family. With all his newfound strength, the wealthy rabbit leapt up to the clouds and made his way to his father's house in his best clothes. When he arrived, he saw his two older brothers waiting at their father's door. To his delight, they were smaller than he was. They didn't have fancy clothes, but instead rags. They were not perfectly clean like him, but dirty from labor. Oddly enough, the older brothers didn't seem to care, but smiled genuinely as they embraced their younger brother. My dear sons, tell me all about your gardens, the father said that evening after catching up with his boys. The youngest brother grew antsy as he waited for his siblings to tell their father about their meager gardens and long work days. He couldn't wait to show them how he had won. Finally, it was his turn. Father, my garden has grown to be the largest in the world. His father and brothers were in awe and praised him for his great success. I am proud of you all for growing such fruitful gardens. Tell me, have you fed many from them? The two older brothers shared the number of people they fed. Then the third beamed and proudly said, I do not know the number, father, for my garden feeds the entire world. His father stood up smiling proudly. Then it's time, he said. At that moment, a great sound boomed. They ran out of their father's house to see a large school of thin fish flying above them. Those are the fish from my world, said the wealthy rabbit. And those are the creatures from my world, said the older brother. And mine as well, said the oldest. To his amazement, the wealthy rabbit's brothers and father started to float. The wealthy rabbit panicked. Please, father, please, brothers, come back down. No, son, it's time to swim higher. The wealthy rabbit frantically tried to hold on to his father, but nothing he did could weigh him down enough to stop his ascension. The wealthy rabbit began to cry, holding on tightly but his father eventually slipped through his fingers. Where are you going? He cried. We are going somewhere above all of this, said the fish. Come with us, his brothers cried happily, their eyes focused somewhere above. The wealthy rabbit used all of his strength and tried to jump to where his family was, but he was too heavy and would fall back down every time. I can't, he cried. Please do not leave me alone, he begged but they were already too high up to hear him. The wealthy rabbit was so heavy that the clouds eventually gave way to his mass as he jumped higher and landed each time, heavier than before. And he plummeted down to the watery world he had ravaged, sinking to the deepest depths of the sea. And there he wails alone as everyone he knows swims through space up amongst the stars without him.